Hey there, Dengas Stu here. Today's video is about reinstalling the valves and camshaft into this Honda outboard cylinder head and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. This outboard had a blown cylinder head. There was quite a bit of water in the bottom cylinder and as a result, the valves from the bottom cylinder looks like this too. It's not super healthy but the whole lot's been off to get machined so the actual edges here are now fine where the valve touches the cylinder head where it seats and the head itself has been machined and everything as well so time to put it back together. To do this job I've got a set of these which are the valve stem seals so we'll put new valve stem seals in as we go. We're also going to be using a simple spring compressor like this to reinstall them. Before we get started, I'll just give you a quick look over the cylinder head. This is the top of the cylinder head. These are the holes for the head bolts. And these are the holes where the valve stems are going to come through. And then on top here is where the camshaft lies. Around the side here, we've got the holes for the spark plugs. And then on the bottom, you can see here's where the spark plugs come through into the cylinder head and here's where the valves are going to be seating against. Intake manifold bolts on here and this is where the exhaust comes out. You can see here also that the valves are two different sizes. The larger one's the intake valve, the smaller one is the exhaust valve. First thing I do is just put a small bit of pre-assembly grease on it. That makes these things a little bit easier to install, to push through the stem seal and also means that when it starts up for the first time before you get full oil pressure you know, you don't have any sort of wear in that early startup phase. I've just had a bit of a play with the first two just to figure out which cup works on the end of the compressor. So the compressor comes, this one anyway, like this. This is a wind-in type, you get lever types, all different types. But this particular one seems to work pretty well because the little spring seats fit inside here. Ooh, if I can show you. And they're kind of captivated inside this little lip here. So this particular fitting seems to be working best for this outboard. I'll bring the camera over now and just point down and show you. And we'll do the other end here. The ends are a bit easier because I can kind of hang the cylinder head off the bench a little bit and get the tool around both sides. So we'll do this and then I'll do the middle one. So this is another intake valve. These valves can actually go anywhere because they're not lapped anymore. These are actually machined to a bit of an interference fit that as they hammer with the valves open and closing, they actually bed themselves in. So a bit of pre-assembly lube on it, seat it down. The next thing I need to put on is this, which is a spring seat at the bottom of the spring. And this is the type that goes at the top. You'll see there's different inner diameters, different profiles, that kind of thing. So we'll pop that down. Then I'm going to put a new stem seal on. I'm just going to put a little bit of pre-assembly grease inside there too. You can see there on the stem seal there's a little spring, a little metal collar here and once that clips over a lip here that'll lock in quite tightly. Now I'll get my spring and you'll see here the spring has tighter coils here and it's more open here and the tighter coils go down to the bottom. Then I've got this spring cap at the top, pop that on now is where we use the compression tool to get it so that the valve itself is poking out through the top of the spring. When I'm putting the spring compressor on too, I'm making sure that the other end, just by feel, is centred on the face of the valve. That way you know it's pushing straight down. In here now you can see the top of the valve stem protruding a bit further than the spring. You can also see if I rock this tool around I can move the spring a bit. And that's kind of important because I've now got to put these little locking collets in, or little keepers, and I need them both to sit in and sometimes you do need to manoeuvre the spring a little bit to get them to sit well. These are the two little collets or keepers and they're really easy to lose so keep an eye on them because if you lose one 
you know, you can't get the motor back together to you order another one. So I'm just going to drop them in. They go small side down, so they're, they're tapered. There's a large side and a small side. And you have to get them seated like that. So you can see they're sitting quite nicely inside there. Hopefully you can anyway. And then all I have to do is back the spring compressor off. And that'll keep the whole lot together. And we're done. That's the basic procedure. As you can see, it's not rocket science. You do just have to get those little collets seated well. If they're all a bit wonky, they're not going to sort of self-align as the spring releases. So they've got to be in nicely. That way you can be assured as you take the spring off, it's all fine. I know I'm a bit of a shocker for PPE, but do recommend glasses for these because they can go flying because there is a bit of pressure on the spring and you are there looking straight at it. So the chance of going in your eye is pretty high. So be careful with safety glasses, that kind of thing. Now it's a case of just repeating the procedure. So I won't bore you with that. I'll go pop the other three in and then we'll start putting the camshaft in. Oh, in case you're wondering, this section here are the valve guides. They're the ones that sort of align the valves and they can wear out with the motion as well. So sometimes you need valve guides replaced as well. So here we've got all our valves and springs in. On the other side, you can see each cylinder's now got its intake and its exhaust valve in and they're all closed. The reason they're all closed is that these springs push the end of the valve up and pull the valve against the cylinder block. It's the camshaft that opens them. So their natural position is closed and it's not until the camshaft exerts force on them down that they open. This camshaft has two obvious ends. The top here is threaded where we start getting our sort of driving pulley for the timing belt going on. The other end has this sort of groove in it and that's because the oil pump is driven off the bottom of the camshaft and that's where the oil pump gets its motion from. On the side here is where the fuel pump goes. We have the oil pump on the bottom and the fuel pump on the side here. This fuel pump here is driven by a push rod here, which is in turn driven by the camshaft. You can't get this in once the camshaft's in, so that's the next thing we're going to put in. Once again, a bit of pre-assembly lube on it, and then pushes in from the back here. What I'm going to do now is put some pre-assembly grease where the camshaft rides. Then all we have to do is just drop it on. This disc here, or this lobe on the end of the camshaft, is the one that drives that push rod. So you can see as you rotate it, it pushes out, and then on the pump itself, that then pushes on the pump here, and the pump's spring-loaded, so that's what returns the pin back out. So the camshaft pushes it in, the spring inside the pump pushes it back out. What I want to do is find a position where none of the lobes are pointing upwards, get them all pointing to the sides, and that'll make it easier when I drop the rockers on. Next thing we need to do is drop the rockers on. But before I do that, you'll see these are adjustable for your valve clearances. And I'm gonna back them all the way off. I'll put some pre-assembly grease on the running surfaces in here as well. Also, when you're dropping the rocker assembly on, Make sure that they haven't come around like this. You need them all to be flat so they don't end up tucking under. This is the section here that runs on the camshaft and these push on the valves. They'll obviously need adjusting when it's back in position, but for now we'll leave them loose. This rocker assembly has these dowels, so we know it fits in a very specific location. Getting this all lined up can be a bit fiddly. These are sprung loaded to keep them in position, give them a bit of play. Next, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on each of these rocker assembly bolts. Unfortunately, one of these rocker assembly bolts is missing for whatever reason. I'll have to check if it's in the packaging that came back from the engineer or whatever, but these would then need to be talked up the spec, which I'd have to look up anyway. At the top here, there's a camshaft seal, so I'm going to pop that in and just put a little bit of pre-assembly lube on the inside of it here. It's nice and easy to get that in now because I haven't torqued the bolts here down so there's a bit of gap and then it'll clamp down on the seal once I do that. 
I had to keep working on this a little bit when the workshop was too noisy to film, unfortunately. But I've got the rocker assembly bolted down now. I ended up getting a bolt to replace the missing one from an engineering shop down the road. It's the right diamond, the right thread, and it's a high tensile bolt. And it's a lot faster than trying to order a Honda part. I've also now just got the fuel pump on, the oil pump back on, and I've thrown the cam pulley on, which I think in Honda speak they call it the pulsar pulley or something like that. Now I need to be able to rotate the camshaft. Before I do that though, I'm just going to use an oil can to put a fair bit of oil on the camshaft itself. You could probably oil it first, but I'm doing it now. And that way, the rocker arms don't run dry against the camshaft as I rotate it. Before I put this cylinder head back on the engine block, I need to rotate it so that cylinder one is at top dead center. This is reasonably easy on this motor because we've got the timing mark on the pulley and it's also then marked on the block where I have to line it up. The other thing to know is that Hondas turn counterclockwise, well this particular one does anyway, which is not quite as common as motors turning clockwise. You'll see here there's a T and an arrow. This is cylinder one, then we've got cylinder two and cylinder three. On the cylinder block down here, you can see that this is the mark that we line it up with. So as long as T in this arrow is lined up with T in this arrow, we know that this is rotated so that cylinder one is on top dead center. If we flip it over now, we can see we've got an exhaust port open on cylinder number three, the intake port open on cylinder number two, and both valves closed on cylinder number one. So cylinder number one is top dead center of its compression stroke. Previously, there was also a couple of dowels in this cylinder head. I've taken those out and put them onto the engine block because I want to be able to then hang the head gasket on the engine block and then put the cylinder head on. To remove these dowels, you put one of the head bolts through the dowel and then it allows you to sort of grip the dowel with some vice grips and wriggle it and get it out without crushing it. Speaking of tips, another tip Arne gave me while we were talking about putting this together is saying that when I do the valve clearances to actually make them slightly larger than specification. The reason for that is that because these aren't lapped, they're just cut to an interference fit, as they sort of hammer in, they will actually go into the head a little bit further, which means the gap will close up. So by starting, you know, one or two thou of a larger gap, then you'll get closer to the true spec. Then get it hot, run it, let it cool down, check them again. These are the two dowels I was talking about before. And here's our new head gasket with a coating of Hylomar on both sides. And I gave this surface here below quite a good clean up with a wire brush and actually just turned each piston to top dead center so I could give it a bit of a clean as well. On this side, you can see this is where the exhaust from the head, the actual sort of exhaust manifolds are part of the head and the head's down here. This side is where our carbs and everything will come on and the intake manifold will join to the head there. And we've got a new gasket for that too. Well, that wraps it up for today. Sorry I didn't get to film every step of the process completely, but it gets really hard once the workshop gets busy and it's noisy and it really doesn't work. That kind of neatly brings me to the Patreon account I was talking about a week or two ago. I've now set that up and the idea behind that is that it'll help me hopefully free up a day a week to actually do some filming and focus on that rather than trying to squeeze it into the gaps. I'm hoping that will help make the videos more complete, a bit more planned and certainly take a bit of the pressure off me trying to work six or seven days a week. I'll be uploading a video in a day or two that talks about what that Patreon account's all about. It's actually a video that Patreon recommends you create that people get to see when they visit your page on their site, but they don't host videos, so I need to upload it to YouTube anyway. I'll turn ads off and just put it there, so if you see that, feel free to ignore it, but if you're interested, take a look. Before I forget, I've also finally got around to creating a Facebook page for the channel. So it's just on Facebook as Dango Marine, so feel free to check that out and give it a like so you can see updates. On there I'll just be putting some photos, notifications of the video, all that kind of stuff. I know I'm not going to have time to answer every single comment that gets posted there, but feel free to post your own pictures, your own questions, and also feel free to answer other people's questions if you've got some experience in that area and know the answer. Alright, getting back to the job we just did, I do have that video on adjusting the valve clearances, so I'll put a link to that. And I'll also be doing the timing belt on the green machine. And that's actually a neat sort of follow on from this video, because it shows how to then get the cam and the crank perfectly in sync. In that video, I'll also show how to look at the cam lobes and determine whether cylinder one's at top dead center on the compression stroke if you don't have timing marks on the cam pulley. In the meantime though, we'll pick up the boat building project and next time you see that, we'll be putting the bulkheads up on the strongback. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you soon. See ya.